record to this computer. All right, we are officially recording. That means it's time to talk about kinematics. Uh, reminding you that kinematics is just talking about how things move. So it's not so much the why things move, but it's the how, how to describe how things move. So just a couple of uh, reminders to start off. Vector versus scalar. Vectors have magnitude and direction, while scalars just have magnitude. It does not matter which direction they are moving. They are uh, scalars with no direction. And speaking of vectors, all vectors can be broken down into components. So if we had a velocity that let's say it was at an angle like this, right? And let's say the angle was relative to the horizontal, um, it would have a component Let's say if this is the, the whole vector v, it would have a vx and it would have a vy. And if you know this angle, you know a few things. First and foremost, v through the Pythagorean theorem is always going to be equal to vx squared plus vy squared. Um, so you can figure out what V is from that, or reciprocally, you could figure out one side if you know two of them. But you can also, because sine of theta for this angle is going to be opposite over adjacent, it's going to be Vy over V. So Vy, we can rewrite as V times sine theta. Similarly, because cosine is, oh, I did, it said opposite over adjacent. I apologize, it's opposite over hypotenuse. I did the right thing. I just wrote the wrong thing down. So uh, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Sorry about that. But in that case, this is our adjacent side Vx. This is still our hypotenuse V. So we can rewrite Vx frequently as the hypotenuse V times the cosine of the angle. So depending on what you already know, you can solve for these sides, you can solve for the angle. If you uh, don't have V, uh, you can also remember that tangent of theta is going to be opposite over adjacent, so that would be Vy over Vx. So if we wanted to solve for the angle, you could frequently use tangent inverse is Vy opposite over Vx. Quick reminders of some things about velocity and vectors. Um, speaking of scalars versus vectors, I'm going to kind of divide this into two little categories. Um, and talk about the ones that are correspond to each other. So distance is a scalar, and it's just you know how far something moves and um, includes the whole path. Whereas displacement is a vector uh, and it's just the change in position. Which you can write as delta x 
equals x minus x naught. Where this is, remember, the final position, and this is the initial. So that's that's those first two scalars. If we talk about how far they go over time, we have speed, which is just distance over time. Again, the direction doesn't matter. And it's a scalar, it's included here. And then we have velocity, which is displacement over time. Um, and we can write that as delta x over um, t or delta t. Maybe I'll even be write delta t just to be a little bit more careful. Okay. And then finally, and there's not really a great analog in scalars for this, uh, but acceleration is change in velocity over time, which is again, delta V over delta T. Hopefully these things are a little bit familiar. Um, and I'm gonna actually draw some graphs now and remind you of how the graphs of these things uh, relate to one another. I'm gonna move this up, maybe off, just in case you're writing. And I'm gonna draw a graph of position time, velocity time, and acceleration time. Okay, so I'm gonna write position, Gonna have units of m. If we just call that a variable, we would just call it x. Come on. Time. Velocity, which I'm just gonna do is v. And acceleration. Time. And let's do a very common graph that throws a lot of people for a loop. So let's say there's this graph here. And let's say this is what the velocity time graph looks like. Let's say, uh, and I might change color just so you can see it well. Now I'll, I'll draw it in here. This is what the um, acceleration time graph looks like. I'm gonna change the color. So it's a little more obvious about which part is the graph part, all right? And I will now move these all up so you can see all three. Uh, are there any questions thus far? This may be a decent little, uh, check-in point before we hit the next section. Any questions so far? Okay, I will actually, maybe I can, nope, so far, got a question, nope, okay, cool. So um, I'll remind you that if we want to go from a, position time graph to a velocity time graph, we're gonna look at the slope. And if we want to go from a velocity time graph to an acceleration time graph, 
we're also going to look at a slope. But if we wanted to go the opposite way, um, and I'm going to actually use pencil so I can draw it in. You can see it here. And we wanted to know what the change in position was. We would use the area between the curve and the x axis or the time axis to get the change in position or the displacement on a velocity time graph. Likewise, if I wanted to know the change in velocity, it's also the area. It's just called change in velocity. Hello, hello. I'm actually reviewing right now. I will come find you after I'm done, good sir. All right. Uh, and then this is again the area that gives us this. Okay. And this is maybe one that, that looks a little bit familiar um, because this is, if this right here is negative 9.8, and again, I should probably put my units in here, meters per second squared, meters per second, and just meters, um, then this is what the uh, velocity time curve, it doesn't have to be, but this is what it could look like and this is what it would be. So this would be an example, all three of these graphs of an object thrown upward in free fall. And remember, this is just one, one dimension. So it's probably like the y direction, and this would be vy, and this would be ay, in which case it goes up, hits a peak, stops, comes back down. It starts with an initial velocity in the positive direction, goes up, up, up until it hits its peak and its velocity is zero and then comes back down. Uh, and then uh, the acceleration due to gravity, if you're in free fall, is negative 9.8 or negative G right there. And I guess I could say 9.81, negative G. Um, and again, it's in free fall. If the only force acting on it is FG, the force of gravity can be the only force acting on it. If there is air resistance, it is not in free fall. not free fall. Okay. Um, do I have any questions about that? So on the first page where you wrote the equation for velocity, the one that's like V equals square root of VX squared, yep. could it take out a VX and a VY? Uh, Say, say that one more time. Could you take out a VX and a VY since there's two of them? Each? Uh, no, you, you have to, to actually calculate it out. So this plus, if it was VX squared times VY squared, you could, um, but because of this plus, you can't. It, uh, it complicates matters. So you have to actually do the, the calculation. Okay, makes sense. Okay, good, great question. All right, any other questions? Okay, 
no other questions. And we are going to talk about the university accelerated motion equations because there, if there's only FG acting on it, FG is the net force. So that means we can use uh, A equals negative G, um, and it is uniform acceleration, which means we can use our UAM equations or our kinematic equations. So I'm going to pull those up now, right here. Can you see that OK? Okay, let me check. Excellent. So um, UAM equations can be used only when you have a constant acceleration. If you have a non-constant acceleration, these don't apply. But if you do, you can use these equations. And this is our friend, the equation picker chart, um, which tells you, again, depending on the variables that you have uh, uh, and specifically which variables you don't have and you don't need. Remember the de -hun, de -hun, um, you know, don't have, don't need. That's the ones that are X'd out here. So I'm gonna write DHDN, don't have, um, don't have, don't need. Don't have, don't need. Okay, so if you don't have and don't need your displacement, your x minus x naught, then you would use this one here, uh, v equals at plus v naught. If you don't have and don't need the final velocity, you would use this one here, delta x equals v naught t plus one half at squared. Um, and uh, if you don't have and don't need time, you will use this one, v squared equals 2a delta x plus v naught squared. Um, these equations are the ones that are going to be on the equation sheet in a slightly different form, but they will be on the equation sheet. Um, these ones you use less frequently, but they're good to know. They're good equations just to, um, uh, to have memorized, to know about a situation where you don't have and don't need the acceleration. Um, you have delta x equals one half v plus v naught t, and um, an equation where, and it's even less less common to use this one, uh, but still it's good to know delta x equals v t minus one half a t squared. Notice this equation and this equation are very similar, uh, but if you um, have your final velocity, you use it and you use the minus side, if you have um, your initial velocity and don't have your final velocity, you can use this one. So strongly, strongly recommend um, reminding yourself uh, that um, uh, of these and, and practicing using these um, before, before the exam. Uh, probably remind yourself, oh yeah, those equations, which uh, Mr. P called UAM equations and I call uh, just kinematic equations. Um, so I'll give you just a little bit of time to write that down. Uh, and then we're gonna talk about projectile motion. Um, and some things that you know if something's in projectile motion, and then we'll we'll do some practicing. Okay. Um, and we're gonna break it down into the x direction and the y direction. In fact, if you have this down, can I get you to say done in the chat? Okay. 
Na, 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 na. Cool. Is that everyone? I think it might be everyone. Okay, cool. So let's move on to uh, projectile motion. So reminding you, projectile motion is like something launched at an angle like this. It could be straight up. It could be at an angle. Uh, it's, it's actually got to be in some sort of angle um, to, to utilize both. If you launched it straight up, you wouldn't have an X direction. Um, but if you launched it to, to the side, it can be straight horizontal. It can be up like this. But it's going to be um, at, at an angle. So um, reminding you, because the only force acting on this projectile anywhere is going to be the force of gravity in order to use uh, this scenario. Um, there is no force in the x direction. So ax is going to be 0. In the y direction, ay is going to be negative g or negative 9.81 meters per second squared. Um, v naught x and v x are going to be constant. Whatever it starts with in that direction is going to be what it ends with, because there's no acceleration. And you can use the equation v x equals delta x over delta t. Uh, or just rewritten as VXT equals delta X is fine too. But that that is really the information we have about the X direction. And the Y direction, because it's in free fall, we have this that we know about AY. Um, we know we can use UAM equations. Um, we don't necessarily know v not x. We don't necessarily know, sorry, v not y or v y. Um, we do know this. Uh, and the thing that they have in common with each other is going to be the time. Um, so it is going to connect both the x and y direction. So if you have information uh, in the x direction, and you want in, uh, to use it to connect in the y direction, you need to solve for time first. Solve for to get between x and y directions. OK. Um, so then just remind you that if you know, again, if you have a velocity at an angle, um, break it into Vx and Vy. And some angle theta. I'm not doing any, any problem. Uh, necessarily, we're just kind of going over material, and then we're going to do a problem soon. OK. Um, I think that's kind of all of the information that I want you to know. Um, and then, yeah, I think that's really all I want to review in terms of content. Do I have any questions right now over anything we've talked about yet? before we practice the FRQ. Any questions at all? OK. Then if I don't have any questions, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop recording.